This means that 94 floors shattered at an average rate of about 10 floors per second. This means that the North Tower collapsed as fast as objects fall under gravity with no resistance. Explosives were shattering the tower slightly faster than the rubble was falling. The towers were built by the government, so taxpayers owned both of them. However, somehow the government was convinced to lease the towers for 99 years, and Larry Silverstein became landlord on July 24, less than two months before the attack. He then had control of the maintenance and security departments, and he began to replace security personnel. Silverstein brought Frank Lowy into the deal to become landlord of the underground shopping mall. Lowy is a billionaire who owns shopping malls in several nations. After the towers disintegrated, Silverstein demanded insurance companies pay him twice what the policy stated, on the grounds that each tower underwent separate attacks. What a coincidence that after these guys got control of the World Trade Center, Osama bin Laden decided to destroy the entire complex. The packages of explosives would have to be placed in an area above the ceiling tiles. Each package would have a battery and a radio receiver. A computer would be able to detonate the explosives in any sequence by sending the appropriate signals to the packages. To summarize, the 9-11 Commission ignored the following facts. Building 7 at the World Trade Center was never hit by an airplane and had no significant fire. It was 47 floors tall, constructed of steel, and a different design than the Twin Towers. Yet it fell straight down into a pile of rubble at 5.30 p.m., just like a controlled demolition. The Federal Emergency Management Agency reported that the specifics of the fires in World Trade Center 7 and how they caused the building to collapse remain unknown. Concerning the Twin Towers, in October of 2001, Scientific American told us that they just don't build them as tough as the World Trade Center. Since the Meridian Plaza in Philadelphia burned fiercely for 19 hours yet never collapsed, why did the South Tower at the World Trade Center fall after burning less than one hour and the North Tower fall after burning only two? This is even more puzzling considering that the Federal Emergency Management Agency has told us that most of the jet fuel was burned in the initial fireball, and recent fire tests by Cardington found that a steel building survived fires in experiments with extreme temperatures beyond the range possible with jet fuel. Moreover, the black smoke means that the fire was oxygen starved and could not have reached the maximum potential temperature of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet cleanup crews found melted steel in the basements. Steel melts at a much higher temperature of 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. Days later, NASA images found hot spots in the building that still exceeded the maximum temperatures possible from jet fuel, but not from explosives like C4, which creates temperatures of 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. Fire Engineering Magazine has told us that no steel building has ever been destroyed by fire, that the World Trade Center investigation was a half-baked farce, and that all of the important evidence was destroyed illegally before the investigation was concluded, some before it began. Why was $40 million spent on Clinton's sex life while only $600,000 was spent on investigating the World Trade Center fires and collapses? The entire 9-11 Commission spent only $15 million, while all expenditures on Clinton's indiscretion exceeded $65 million. Though some say the airliner's impact weakened the towers, winds from winter storms on the towers had at times been greater than the impact of the airliners. Neither tower suffered any damage as a result of severe weather at any time. The buildings collapsed at the maximum speed of gravity. This is impossible without explosives. Each floor hit would have slowed the fall somewhat, and more at the beginning. The concrete was encased in a steel-framed pan, riveted inside columns of steel beams, welded together in a network with steel bands. 
Yet steel beams and clouds of finely pulverized concrete came shooting out of the buildings up to three times the width of the building at hundreds of miles per hour. This is only possible with explosives. The damage and resulting fires were on one corner, affecting two sides. That means that the other two sides of the building were unharmed. Building 7 had no impact or significant fires, yet all three collapses were straight down. Only the tops of the Twin Towers should have fallen over, yet the entire building fell straight down each time as in a controlled demolition. Even though the alleged hijacker's instructor said, I'm still to this day amazed that he could have flown into the Pentagon, he could not fly at all. The flight controller said, the steep turn was so smooth, it's clear there was no fight for control going on. The complex maneuver suggests the hijackers had better flying skills than many investigators first believed. We heard at the 9-11 Commission, Mr. Mineta. There was a young man who had come in and said to the Vice President, the plane is 50 miles out, 30 miles, 10 miles out. This means that Cheney knew this plane was coming at Washington and the Pentagon, and yet no planes had been scrambled to protect Washington after more than an hour had passed since the World Trade Center was attacked. There should have been an umbrella of F-15 and other aircraft over Washington. An F-15 fighter reaches 29,000 feet in 2.5 minutes when ordered to scramble. It can travel 50 miles and destroy a target in less than two minutes. NORAD successfully intercepted off-course and suspected hijackings 67 times during the year prior to 9-11. Yet on that morning there were not one, not two, not three, but four failures. Three after they knew the planes were hijacked with those in the cockpits intent on mass murder. Why? Because, as Michael Rupert details in his book in Crossing the Rubicon, Richard Cheney was commanding NORAD war games that diverted our Air Force from intercepting the hijacked airplanes. A Zogby poll reported that 66% of New Yorkers wanted the 9-11 investigation reopened. Moreover, it found that 49% thought that VIPs in the government knew ahead of time and let it happen. Thus, the final report of the 9-11 Commission does not address many important questions. It is an insult to the victims of these terrible tragedies. Please help us catch the real terrorists of 9-11. Go to reopen911.org or call 1-888-INVESTIGATE and sign the petition to have the 9-11 investigation reopened. Thank you.